Good everyone. My name is Vinay. I'm a product manager at Influx Data. And I'm going to talk about our Influx Data API and how it can help you deliver value to your customers and help you build your application. So what I'll do is I'll start with an overview and then I'll um, dive a little bit into the key pillars of our API and how it's of value to you. And then I'll touch on what's next for our API and I'll end with a little brief on the demo that you'll see after this. All right, so let's get started with our API overview. At Influx Data, we're all about providing time to awesome for our developers. We want our API to be the value creation tool for builders like you. Now, you may be creating value in different domains. It could be industrial IoT or you know, trading in crypto or fintech space, or maybe you're monitoring your assets in real time. Now, what we know is like with the explosion of devices that can now emit data, the potential insights that you can have from this data is endless. More often than not, what we've seen is that the value that's being created is usually a story of data over time. And that's where we come in, as your time series database of choice. Now, you're building modern applications, and of course you're going to be using tools that are fit for purpose. And APIs are the language of such a composable application. And as a time series database of choice for developers, we have a performant API that will fuel your innovations. Now, we know developers have language preferences. You may be a Python shop or Node.js or you prefer JavaScript. We have client libraries that can help you get going fast. You, the developer, can automate setting up operations or management of InfluxDB instances all the way up to reading and writing data from the database using these client libraries in the language of your choice. And if you stick around for the end of the talk, you'll see a demo on this from my colleague, Maya. So let's get into the key pillars of our API. Now there are four key aspects to our API. One is data ingest. You've got data that, that are on your devices, on your applications that you need to get into your database. Now, the second aspect of it is querying it. This allows for you to query the data that you've now pulled into your database and maybe visualize it or it adds some value to your application at that point. Then there's the automation aspect of it, where you can run a complicated logic at regular intervals, and that can kick off other workflows under certain conditions. And lastly, we have platform management endpoints. This is for managing the resources of the database and access management. Now, you know, let's try to make this a little real. So as I walk through the, each one of these pillars, I'll try to relate it to a fictional smart meter utility company who helps their customers understand their usage and saves, their, saves costs for them. All right, let's talk data ingest. We know there are a variety of data sources that you want to ingest into your database. It could range from tiny sensors to large industrial IoT devices or some trading information from your fintech or blockchain application. It could be cloud or on-prem server monitoring information. These are all varied sources of data that have varied formats. Good thing is we can arm you with a variety of ways of ingesting this data um, using our right endpoint under the hood. One option application developers have is to simply transform the data into line protocol and send this data directly to our REST API. Or they can use the Influx CLI for this. Maybe you need this mechanism baked into your application. In that case, you can use a client library in the language of your choice, be it Python, JavaScript, Ruby. We have most of the popular languages covered. These libraries really simplify the write process. They're intelligent about the format the data needs to be ingested in, and it does the required transformation for you. Additionally, they're sensitive to the demands of ingesting large data into the database. So this will really speed up your process of, of using Influx data. Another popular ingest mechanism is Telegraph. Telegraph has hundreds of plugins, and this will allow you to read data from a lot of varied formats and transform it and send it into Influx data in a language it understands. Telegraph agents have the ability to batch data 
to account for connectivity issues uh, as well. So that's another thing that makes it so popular. Now, additionally, let's say you have some historical data, small amounts that you want to read in and analyze. You could use our UI or the bulk import function, CSV function, to pull this data into the database. Now, let's think about the fictional utility company. They would use Telegraph on their smart meters to input data into InfluxDB Cloud. Telegraph plugin would be able to read the data in the format that the smart meters uh, emit and convert that into the line protocol that InfluxDB can understand. Moreover, like Telegraph can handle the intermittent connectivity issues that these meters could face in the field. All right, now we have the data into the database. We obviously need to query it, and that's the next part of it. You want to query the data to extract value from it. And on the InfluxDB platform, you could use Flux or InfluxQL to make that happen. Uh, you could query and transform the data as you need. Now, extracting value could mean different things. Like It could just be visualizing it on Data Explorer or the dashboards that you have on the UI. Or you could be using a third-party visualization tool. Um, or it could be the application that is directly querying the database. Uh, for all of this, you can use the uh, query endpoint directly. Now, just like in the case of ingest, we have the client libraries in the language of your choice that can make querying and more importantly, output transformations really simple and easy to use. All right, let's double click on that a little. When querying the API endpoint directly, the query results are in annotated CSV format. That's a tabul tabular format like you can see in the snippet. You can also push down more data in the query response by zipping the content. When you're using the client libraries, though, that's essentially the same endpoint that's wrapped in the language of your choice. You have the ability to send the response in a wide variety of data formats, like be it CSV, raw data, uh, streams, even Pandas data frame. Imagine what you can do with that. Transforming data like this makes it easy to use InfluxDB in your context, in your application. Now let's think back to our fictional utility company again. And one of their value adds is they provide a client app where the users can see and visualize their usage over time and even compare it against their uh, zip code or the type of home that they have. Now the app can use a client library that can simply make queries to pull data against the relevant buckets. They can use tags to narrow down the queries to zip codes or home types. The data can be as granular or aggregated as it needs to be on the database. OK, now moving on to our next pillar, automation. Now, this is a key value of our platform. Our task endpoint can let you run queries at regular intervals without having to worry about provisioning or operating the runtime yourself. On your tasks, you can check for certain conditions and based on that trigger alerts or maybe a, a page duty ping and wake somebody up in the middle of the night or a Slack message to a, a channel. Um, and add to that the power of Flux where you can go beyond just simple querying. For example, you can pull data from relational databases and add additional context to your data. This can help you do more complex logic and trigger relevant events as you need. Another tool that helps you automate is the scripts endpoint. A script is essentially flux logic can, that can be saved as an asset. Additionally, you can parameterize key aspects of the logic, like the input bucket, the output bucket, the measurements, so that the scripts can deliver varying output depending on the input you give it. Now, there are three ways you can use scripts. One is simply save and share complex flux logic within your organization. Flux is, flux is a powerful language, but you have to learn a new language. So the ability to share flux within your platform, uh, within your platform and within your organization will help democratize flux skills within your org. Now the second way is to invoke it via an API on demand. This is really convenient to kick off query or transform logic from your application. What's even better is like, this logic is running on the DB platform and not on your application, which is a huge benefit to you. 
Now, the third way to use this is for task management at scale to make that efficient. Now, tasks can now reference scripts. Now, what that does is you can have several tasks that depend on the same scripts that just differ by the input parameters you give it. The task can do different things because the output will be different depending on the input. And anytime you need to change the underlying logic that runs several of these tasks, simply change the script and you can change all these logic. That really helps with management at, task management at scale. Now I think let's put this into our fictional utility company scenario. Now they probably have thousands of smart meters that they have to maintain and troubleshoot and repair. Now they can use tasks to check and alert when meters go dark, simple dead man checks. Now with the power of flux, they could actually use the zip code information to look up relational data and have a little bit more targeted alerting. Now you'd imagine a company like this, they probably need to save costs and they need predictive maintenance uh, for that. And their maintenance application probably wants to pull and transform and check for certain conditions for a set of meters to detect certain events. Like that's their IP, that's, their IP, that's, that's what makes this company better than others, right? But they can put that flux logic into a script and invoke it as needed from their application when the condition arises. And that way they can, they can be more predictive about the maintenance that they need. All right, last but not the least, we have the platform management APIs. Now, they will help you programmatically manage the lifecycle of buckets, organizations, and tokens on our platform. We even actually have a secret store that you can use uh, in your application. Now, these endpoints make it very easy to scale the DB platform along with your application. And right after this, there'll be a demo by Maya that actually goes into this scenario a little bit more. Now, again, let's put this in context of our, of our utility company. As the company scales, they probably move into new locations. They have a lot more meters to, to manage. They have more personnel who needs access to this. Well, platform resources like orgs, buckets, tasks can simply be automatically provisioned using these APIs. And the company can scale and so will the platform with them. Now, we spoke about all the pillars of our, of our uh, API. And here's another big value add uh, of using uh, the Influx Data API. Our APIs are compatible across our different offerings. Now, you may start your journey with OSS and then move to the cloud or enterprise, but the great thing is our most basic and uh, important APIs are compatible across our different offerings. So we can grow as you grow. So what's, what's next for the InfluxDB API? We have a few exciting things coming down the pipeline. In the next few quarters, we're gonna add a more user access control functionality into the platform. We're gonna add a read-only user and possibly a super admin user. This will help you better manage access uh, to data on the platform. Another thing we're doing is making our scripts shareable. So allow, it to be, allow scripts to be scoped to an individual or to the org. Um, this, is a, this, is, this will really help with the uh, knowledge sharing use cases that we discussed earlier. And finally, we're putting a lot of thought into the evolution of our API with the introduction of IOX as our time series engine. And we're excited uh, as to where that takes the API. Now, we have uh, some additional resources that you can get into and deep dive on some of the topics that I've covered. And I definitely recommend checking out our Influx DB University and they have increasing content over there. Coming up next is a demo uh, that will show you how you can use the APIs and client libraries to do platform management and read and write data out of the DB. So stick around to watch uh, Maya demonstrate this. Thank you. Thank you.